Right, so these are a couple of the hoppers I'm making for my rainwater harvesting. Um, this is one of them. So this particular one has an outlet at the bottom that will go to the rainwater butt via one of these filters. Um, downpipe will come in off center, probably with um, a spout to sort of direct the water. And the idea is, if I take the mesh off, is that it will fill up to a certain level and drain through. Um, if the rainwater is coming down too hard, it'll obviously fill up quicker and just overflow straight down the uh, downpipe. Um, or if the rainwater butt is full, then this will fill up and out. So it's important that I get um, the level of this correct with the rainwater butt. So really the top level of the rainwater butt probably wants to be the top level of my pipe in here so it can then overflow back through it. Um, the other thing is these filters I'm using, whilst they filter the water coarsely that goes then into the rainwater butt, obviously when the rainwater butt is full and starts overflowing back, it washes the filter back out, which should then wash back down the uh, downpipe. So yeah, it works quite well really. So this particular one has the outlet at the bottom, which then has the has one of these filters screwed into the side of the rainwater butt. Um, this particular one is on my workshop and there's just no room to have the um, filter fit, fitted to the rainwater butt. So I've just done it this way, <coughs> screwed it in there. So same thing really, once it gets up to a certain level, um, it'll overflow down here. And I've got kind of a coarse mesh that goes over the top, more as a leaf guard, so it just stops all the really big stuff, uh, 25 mil square. Um, I might do something finer with this, but you know, I don't really want this to block. So um, yeah, that's kind of how those filters work. So those hoppers are going to take the place of these crappy things that they come with. They're okay, but they tend to block up quite easily. Um, so this pipe will be connected to the bottom of the hopper through here, through our coarse mesh filter into the rainwater butt. And then obviously when this is full, this will just overflow back, wash itself back out as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully that worked well. So at the moment, this is my rainwater system. So we've got these coarse filters and a 250 litre tank there with a piece of um, 25 mil polythene pipe that comes along, links to this one. And again, we've got another connection to the downpipe with a coarse filter. So that plastic pipe carries on underground. And we've got another rainwater butt here. Again, another one of those khaki filters. And, uh, sorry, uh, collection points. And then a filter on this one. Um, and then the pipes from the other two and this one, these three, come up here. So we've got a gate valve for them. This is all insulated underneath the uh, ground as well. And then this pipe here comes across comes up, goes across the garden, and picks up these two tanks. So at the moment, I've got the gutter on the back of the workshop, comes down into another one of those collection thingies that tend to block through our coarse filter into the side of this tank. So this is gonna be the hopper with the filter built into it. Um, yeah, so in total, there's about 1,250 litres of storage, um, which is pretty damn good, really. And then, at the moment, I've just got a gravity tap here with a fine mesh filter. So what comes out of here is pretty clean, really. And then, also, I've got a clear pipe on the side of this rainwater butt which gives me a level so I made sure that all the butts were level same height 
So as they're all linked together, the water level in them all is the same. So at the moment we're up here and that is the level of all the butts. So I've probably got a good thousand litres of water there at the moment. So yeah, pretty cool. Right, I've been working on my pumped rainwater tap. There's my tap through the workshop. And then here it is here. And then, so basically what happens is the water from the rainwater butts is gonna come in here into a pump, which is gonna obviously pump the water through a non-return valve. So the pressure that builds up in this system can't return back. Um, so we have a non-return valve. We come in here through our pressure switch, which I probably set at three and a half bar. Um, so once the pressure gets up to three and a half bar in this pipe work, the pump will shut off, but the non-return valve will stop the pressure um, running back out. Um, and then coming up here, I've got a pressure vessel. So this will all get pumped up to three and a half bar. Um, you'll open your tap. You've obviously got pressurized water in here. Once the pressure drops probably to two and a half bar, um, this will kick the pump back in again. So yeah, that's the idea. Right, so that's the pump and controls all wired in now. I've obviously got to clip the cables and bits and pieces, but um, we've got an outside switch. Um, so I've got a four core cable. So there's an earth, a neutral, a live, and a switch live um, going through that. And then our pressure switch. So again, a four core cable with a live, a neutral, a switch live, and an earth. And then our three core flex to the pump, so live, neutral, and earth. So uh, basically the spur has a three amp fuse in here to protect the circuit. So we go live up to our switch, um, flick the switch on outside, sends a live back to the live to our pump pressure switch. Um, if the pressure has, is low enough and this clicks in, it sends a live back to run the pump. Um, this needs a neutral, which it's got. Uh, there's an indicator light on the switch outside, so that's got a neutral as well. So that's our switch outside. You'll see the indicator light come on. And <clears throat> our pump's kicked in. There's no water in the system at the moment, so I don't want to run that for too long dry. So normally that would pump up to three and a half bar. So there's showing no pressure there at the moment. And then I've set it if it drops below two and a half bar, the pump comes back in. Cool. So this is the other rainwater butt which is filling up. So that's being connected onto those two. Down the bottom there. So the level in the others is dropping. And this one is filling up. Excellent. So yeah, I've got a piece of flexi pipe there. I'm going to insulate all of this into a fine mesh filter. And then that copper goes inside to our pump. So I'm going to check all that in a minute. And I've got one of my new hoppers in. Need to change this bit of pipe. But uh, yeah, all coming along. Right, so I've bled all the air out of this and it's working a treat. back up to four bar. That noise is probably air in the system, but it's probably with this one-way valve. So that should sit at four bar now, because there's no leaks <laughs> until the taps open. So obviously if I turn the switch off, um, the pressure vessel is just going to discharge um, and that holds about half a bucket so um, yeah pretty pretty damn good really 
very pleased. Right, so I've got one of the other hoppers in now. So this is, actually this is probably the main downpipe. Um, a lot of rain comes down that one because it picks up most of the um, roof on the single storey extension. So like before, an overflow if it gets up to that level. It comes down here through our filter and into the rainwater butt. Pretty cool. So that's coming down really fast, which is going flowing faster than this can take. You can see how much is going through that. So now it's overflowing, which is what it should do. So yeah, these are working fantastically.